Picture this. You're not just fixing cars. You're living your passion every day. At Cox, you'll work on a diverse range of automobiles. Surrounded by a team of friendly, like-minded individuals, you'll enjoy great pay and benefits. Ready to make this a reality? At Cox, we're recruiting auto and diesel techs to join our Mannheim and Fleet Services teams. Learn, grow, and fine-tune your career as a technician at Cox. Find out more at cox.career slash autotech. Let's talk about how to have a Halloween focus trip at Walt Disney World. That's coming up on this episode 433 of WWE Prep to Go. Hello and welcome to WWE Prep to Go, Retalk Strategy and Ideas for people planning their Disney World trips. I am your host, Shannon Albert from WDWPrepSchool.com. Thank you for being here for episode 433. Today is a recap of my recent trip, whose entire purpose was to do all the Halloween things. So I'm going to use that as a way to tell you what Halloween things are available at Walt Disney World. Before I get into that, a reminder to follow on social media. And if you want to be a trip report guest, please use the speak pipe information in the show notes of every episode. If it works out with our schedule, we will reach out to you. We do frequently get questions from people who have submitted how will I know when, if you've chosen me? You won't necessarily, but if you are submitting way far in advance, then give it some time because we don't typically schedule, you know, nine months ahead. So just wait and see. Typically, the interviews are scheduled around two months ahead or so, but not not nine months ahead. So just wait and see. And if it works with our schedule, we will notify you. Appreciate everybody who does submit. And we try to fit in as many po- as possible. So let's chat about doing all all the Halloween things at Disney World. Um, The reason I did not do daily updates like I often do during my trips is because when I am playing tour guide, I have a hard time managing that because I'm also posting to social media. Um, However, we did record every night from our camper and did recaps of each day. If you would like to hear those versions of the podcast, I just have a hard time keeping up with the stuff in the parks because I'm trying to be a tour guide. I'm trying to post social media trying to do updates. So I'm going to do it this way instead. I want to start the Halloween focus planning with choosing the hotel or the accommodations because with a Halloween focus trip to me, there's only one choice and that is to stay at Fort Wilderness. Now I've done this before. If you've been around for a while, you'll remember that we in, in COVID times when we were just trying to be a little bit more socially distant, we stayed in a camper that was provided to us by Meacham's RV. It was very fun. We spent a lot of time there, went into the parks a little bit, but it was a good solution at that time. It is also a good solution when you want to do Halloween-focused trip because Fort Wilderness goes all in, namely the campsites themselves where people have, you know, a tradition or a community that they just go so completely out with the decorations. It's on par with, like, you know, people with the best Christmas decorations in your neighborhood, except it's even more impressive because people bring them in. And not only are they decorating their campsites, but they're decorating their golf carts. And because I had three back-to-back trips, because I had a Disney cruise, Disneyland, and Disney World, I did not do that kind of planning. So we were there to observe and enjoy everybody else's decorations, but I didn't bring any of my own because I just didn't get around to it. But it was incredibly fun, and that was the point to staying at Fort Wilderness. So the way that it works is that you book a, a, and when when I say it works, I'm talking about the uh, camper solution that we used. You book a campsite through uh, the Disney World website or through your travel agent. And there are different sites that you can book. In the past, I had a premium site. And this time I had a preferred one. I literally was just booking whatever was available because I booked it maybe six to eight months ago. And that's not very long for Fort Wilderness close to Halloween because it gets booked up so far in advance. And so I was lucky to get a spot which ended up being preferred. I did prefer the premium one more because it's bigger, has more space. So in the future, I will book a premium campsite, but this time it was preferred. The location was all the way on the end near the water and very, very quiet and peaceful. I think the whole place is kind of like that, but this end was was really nice. So that put us close to like uh, the quick service dining. And if we had attended Hoopty Doo Review, we would have been close to there. It also put us close to the boat docks to go to Magic Kingdom. So some conveniences there, but to get to everything else, it was a golf cart right away. So the first thing I did was book the campsite. 
I also did book the golf cart. Now, you used to be able to more easily do that through third-party sources that could bring it to you at your campsite. But now, if you want to do a third-party solution, you have to go get it and bring it with you. And I'm, you know, as a person who flies in, it's just not going to happen. So I booked the, the golf cart through Disney. And so with those two things out of the way, I reached out to Meacham's RV, the same company that we used in 2020, and they were happy to provide a camper. And it's the same camper or very similar one to last time in that it it was very, very big. And it felt especially big when you have two people in there. I told them I didn't need the biggest one because there was only two of us, but they were just nice and provided it. And so what happens is they you give them your campsite information, your reservation number, and then they go to the campsite before you arrive and they get it all set up for you. When we arrived, the camper was there. And then next to it was the picnic table and some camper chairs. They have an outdoor fan. And so that's all set up. And in the past, they were able to deliver golf carts and fire pits. Disney doesn't allow that anymore. So they delivered what they can. And then we showed up and went to the main office for check-in and to get our golf cart. We threw our luggage on the golf cart and went to our campsite. And it was all set up and ready to go. So now we had our golf cart. We were able to charge that right at our campsite. Camper is ready. So we were just ready to go right from the beginning. So I highly recommend Meacham's. They did provide the camper to us. I paid for the campsite and the golf cart and everything else. But they are wonderful to work with. And I wouldn't hesitate to do this. I think it's especially good if you want, if you have to fly in. Like most people at Fort Wilderness are, you know, driving there in their own RVs or they have trucks pulling campers. It, but if you're a person like me that flies in, then this is a great solution because they can do it for you. It also is more affordable if you have more people. So I know that for families of more than four, Disney World can be especially tricky because it's hard to find rooms or you have to book more than one room. So this could be a solution because this camper that we had, it accommodated up to eight people. It also can be a savings for food. Like we went and got some basic groceries and had breakfast every day. So we weren't having to like go out and get breakfast. We also were able to just have like snacks or drinks right there because it has a full kitchen. So it can be cost effective in some situations. I do think that if you're going to stay at Fort Wilderness, that it is an opportunity to enjoy the resort more than the parks. And I would say we did a quite a bit of park time and if we were doing it all over again, we would have done more resort time. So I think that if you are good with, you know, focusing more at the resort, then that's kind of the vibe there. The day that we did rope drop, there wasn't a whole lot of people out at that time of day. You know, it's people are a little bit more slow to get up. We got the best sleep ever because you it's so quiet there. So you don't have hotel sounds like people walking by your door as they head to breakfast or out to the parks. You don't have housekeeping coming in. You don't have that wellness check that Disney does in the hotel rooms every day. There was just no interruptions at all, just quiet. And so literally got one night like nine hours of sleep, which is unheard of for us because we get up so early. So it really was just like so, so peaceful and very, very decorated. Now, everything I've described that is Halloween, re Halloween related so far has been about the guests and the decorations they do. But as you get closer to Halloween, Fort Wilderness itself will do some things as well. So since we were there about a week or week and a half before Halloween, we didn't get the like Fort Wilderness sponsored activities, but they were on display. They had an activity schedule that was for the 29th, 30th and 31st. So people going really close to Halloween or on Halloween can expect to have some things to do that are you know, actually done by Fort Wilderness. And that includes things like a pet parade, a glow party, a golf cart extravaganza, pumpkin decorating, that kind of thing, trick or treating. So there's some more things as you get closer. But even if you weren't there that close to Halloween, there was plenty of things to do. So anyway, that was the reason for staying at Fort Wilderness. And it is super fun. One of my favorite things about being in this niche is that I feel like there's just unlimited possibilities for things to do because it took me, I don't know, 17 years of going to Disney World before I ever stayed at Fort Wilderness. And so it's just fun to have new experiences. And it's really its own culture over there. If you're interested in having a Meacham's RV 
camper for your trip. I will link to them in the show notes so that you can check out the different packages and things that they have. They're wonderful. And I truly, I truly recommend uh, giving it a try as a, a very unique experience at Disney World. Hey, moms, looking for some lighthearted guidance on this crazy journey we call parenting? Join me, Sabrina Kohlberg, and me, Andy Mitchell, for Pop Culture Moms, where each week we talk about what we're watching and examine our favorite pop culture moms up close to try to pick up some parenting hacks along the way. Come laugh, learn, and grow with us as we look for the best tips and maybe a few what not to do's from our favorite fictional moms. From Good Morning America and ABC Audio, Pop Culture Moms. Find it wherever you get your podcasts. So now that we have that settled, where to stay, uh, of course, we want to spend some time in the parks if we're going to do all of the Halloween things. And we're going to start with the most obvious one, which is Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party at Magic Kingdom. Now, we talked about it here before. We talk about it a lot. We've been this year, but of course I was going to go this time in order to do all of the Halloween things. And in our case, because it was only, what did we do? Three park days. This was our actual Magic Kingdom time. So we were there like before four o'clock and got in as soon as they allowed us to. And then, so it was a combination of like doing non-Halloween things like writing Tiana's, but also doing Halloween things during the party, like go, watching the parade and the fireworks and meeting characters and all that kind of thing. And a little bit of trick-or-treating, in fact, something I don't often do during the Halloween party. However, even if you don't do the Halloween party, there are some things that you can do at Magic Kingdom during the day or on non-Halloween party days. And that is you can enjoy the decorations because they're all the way down Main Street. So if you wanna get some photo ops with the pumpkins, that's an option. A lot of the merchandise is available. Some of it's exclusive to the party, but some of it's not. There's also treats, snacks, and drinks that are Halloween themed. There also are some photo pass uh, photos and magic shots that are available. Make sure that you ask the photo pass photographers if they have any Halloween themed magic shots because this year there are several. You don't have to go to the Halloween party to enjoy those. There are also like 3D photo boxes located throughout the park that you can step into and get some pictures. There is not tip there is typically not a photo pass photographer here, but sometimes during the Halloween party they will have photo pass photographers there, but they're still available if you want to use your own camera and step into those 3D photo boxes. And moving over to Hollywood Studios, we have Minnie's Halloween Dine at Hollywood and Vine. If you are not familiar, Hollywood, Hollow, <laughs> let me start that over. Hollywood and Vine is a character meal that changes themes every few months. And so they're just whatever is seasonal they're going to have. That includes Halloween and it's buffet and it has Minnie, Mickey, Pluto and Goofy and Halloween costumes. There's a backdrop as you walk in so you can take a photo of yourself there and enjoy the characters, the backdrop and the food. This used to be one of my least favorite restaurants in all of Disney World. I sometimes would just suffer through it during the holidays because the characters are cute and the restaurant is our, you know, retro, you know, cute vibe. And I just didn't like the food, but now I genuinely enjoy the food. So it was really fun to go and see Mickey and his bat cape and, you know, all the characters came around and uh, really enjoyed the food. I was traveling with a plant-based eater and she was able to find good things to eat. Her favorite was the mushroom risotto, which I can't remember if it's plant-based or if it's vegetarian, but sometimes when she's, you know, traveling, she has to settle for vegetarian instead of strictly vegan but she really liked that. And overall, it was just a good experience. Not not cheap. We did book the Fantasmic dining package for this and then had decided not to stay for Fantasmic. So that did make it a little bit more expensive. We handed our tickets. We went and hunted down two people that could use our reserved seats for Fantasmic. So somebody got some use out of them. But overall, a really good experience. And it's one of the Halloween things that you can do. This year, the Halloween meal uh, runs from August 9th through November 7th, and at that time, it will switch over to the Christmas version, but if you happen to be planning a trip for 2025, that can give you a general idea of what to expect at Hollywood and Vine for the Halloween version. 
Over at Epcot, we did participate in the one Halloween thing they have, which is Pluto's Pumpkin Pursuit, which is a Halloween thing scavenger hunt. This year, it began September 29th and runs through November 1st. It costs $9.99. And basically, you go through Epcot looking for pumpkins that are kind of like Disney bounty as characters. And when you find them, you put the sticker on the appropriate space. It tells you generally the location of where you're looking for the pumpkins, such as Test Track. And you just go to that kind of area and look. And then when you find it, you put the sticker on it. Now, when you buy the scavenger hunt, they will give you the prize at the same time if you want to, which is like a sippy cup shaped like a pumpkin. I think that was Mickey and Minnie versions this year. The thing that I did not like about this is that it was not really in the World Showcase. It's mostly just in, I don't want to say all the names of the lands, but it's mostly in the non-World Showcase. And I I like scavenger hunts that are, that are in the World Showcase because it gives you an easy thing to look for as you make your way around the world. But in this case, they were not there. But it's super simple, can be fun uh, for for kids. When we were looking for pumpkins, we ran into other people doing the same scavenger hunt and it was all adults. So you don't have to be a kid to do it. Uh, It's just a fun thing to try. And it's the only real Halloween thing, Halloween themed thing at uh, Epcot. One side note, uh, as somebody who likes to use mobile checkout in the stores at Disney World because it it saves time and the lines to check out, I thought that I could buy the scavenger hunt easily at via mobile checkout somehow. And I was sent to the mobile checkout person inside Creations who didn't really know what I was talking about. And so she just went over behind the counter at the regular desk and she grabbed it and brought it to me and we did it that way. If I were to do it all over again, I would just have gone up to the counter and purchased it because I was told that it would be easy at the mobile checkout and it ended up not being, but something to consider if you are buying other things and you just want to get a scavenger hunt, you may end up having to buy it at the regular counter and not via mobile checkout. And a couple things that we didn't do, but I wanted to mention, just so you know, the things that are available. We didn't have time to visit Animal Kingdom this trip and they don't have a lot going on, but during the month of October, the animation experience at Animal Kingdom does do Disney villains and they often do also have snacks and things like that available that are Halloween treats that you can buy during the month of October over at Animal Kingdom. And then Disney Springs, although we did go to Disney Springs briefly, we did not get to do any of the Halloween things. So they do have some seasonal treats and they do a little bit of decorating. And then in the month of October, you will also be able to find their roving pumpkin DJ who plays some kid-friendly music and Disney hits every evening through Halloween. Uh, On Saturdays in October, you also can catch live music from the Squad Ghoul on the Waterside stage. And then also Friday, Saturday, Sunday in October, you'll find the zombie drummers, drummers rocking out in town center and the skeleton stilt walkers roaming the marketplace. They will also both be making appearances on October 30th and 31st in celebration of Halloween. So basically some of the typical entertainment that you find at Disney Springs has a Halloween twist during the month of October. I also wanted to mention that let's say you're trying to go during, you know, Halloween time, like during October, but you don't necessarily want to go to the Halloween party. You can still enjoy the Halloween party fireworks outside of the park. So that's from anywhere they are viewable, like the deluxe resorts in the Magic Kingdom area. So you could just go to the beach there and watch, or from the restaurants there like Ohana or California Grill, who pipe in the music. You also could book a uh, a fireworks cruise that you could do and watch them. I will say that there are a lot of projections on the castle during these fireworks that are really fun part of the show, but the fireworks are really big, so they are definitely viewable from outside the park. So that is another option during a Halloween themed trip. And lastly, you might be wondering if you choose not to stay at Fort Wilderness, can you just go there and enjoy the Halloween festivities? I think technically you could, but it gets much, much stricter as you get close to Halloween. It is kind of a similar vibe to, can I watch July 4th fireworks from the Polynesian Resort Beach if I'm not staying there? Like if everyone did that, it would be overcrowded. So they start to check people during crowded times like that. So I wouldn't advise it. In addition, the easiest way to see everything at Fort Wilderness is to have a golf cart and you can't have a golf cart if you're not staying there. So I really wouldn't advise going there. It's 
a very, very hard resort to get around. And it, as you get close to Halloween, they may not even let you in anyway. So I wouldn't suggest doing that. If you're staying outside of Fort Wilderness, a lot of times the resorts will have their own activities, including like pumpkin carving and things like that. But if you want to do the Fort Wilderness specific stuff, I would suggest staying at Fort Wilderness. Of course, I've only talked about the camper version, but you could also do things like tents. There are cabins that you can stay in. So there's, you know, a few different options there. So all in all, we did everything that we could in the few days that we had available and it was super fun. I am, however, looking forward to the clock striking November because I'm more of a Christmas gal, um, but it was fun to do as many Halloween things as, as possible in at Disney World. I think that will wrap up this episode of WW Prep to Go. For more information, including a link to the article about all the Halloween festivities, please check the show notes in your podcast app or head to the website www.prepschool.com. Click on podcast at the top, scroll down to episode 433. Until next time, I will see you on the site. Okay, it's official. We are very much in the final sprint to election day. And face it, between debates, polling releases, even court appearances, it can feel exhausting, even impossible, to keep up with. I'm Brad Milkey. I'm the host of Start Here, the daily podcast from ABC News. And every morning, my team and I get you caught up on the day's news in a quick, straightforward way that's easy to understand with just enough context so you can listen, get it, and go on with your day. So kickstart your morning. Start smart with Start Here and ABC News because staying informed shouldn't feel overwhelming.